Hi everyone, Lewis here, and I'm back with a new interview, this time with my new friend, Jacob Hackett. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for alerts if you want to upload new content to the channel, especially those with disabilities similar to mine. My new pal Jacob was introduced to me by a friend of mine who told me about him. He's a fellow autistic and also has cerebral palsy. But of course, I like what he does. He doesn't let neither of his disabilities stop him. And he interviewed me as part of his month-long telethon series. And he likes to interview different people for his YouTube channel, which is cool. I'll be sure to post the links to his channel and the original version of the said interview in the description below. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the Face for Autism. Streaming with Rob Telephone, I'm Jacob Hackett. Uh, my next guest tonight is, he's a part of the Dive Heart program and at the Adventure Aquarium in Camden, New Jersey. He's here to tell us about that and a whole lot more. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Louis Marinucci. Thank you, Jacob. And actually, Dive Heart and the Adventure Aquarium are two separate things. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. That's okay. It's no big deal, though. But here's the thing. Um, I first heard of you through Brandy at Epicott when she she and I were talking on Monday in a phone call. Oh, cool. Um, so yeah, Louis, I met her. All right. Oh, you, all right, met, go you, ahead. Met, you know Brandy? I know Brandy, too. Yes, I know Brandy because I met her through diving at the aquarium. Oh, very cool. Uh, Louis, my first question, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm Louis Marinucci. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm, I'm on the spectrum, but I'm also a scuba diver. No, and of course, I'm also a YouTuber, Twitch streamer, and I'm also working on becoming a professional merman, which of course, I'm just an amateur for now. And I will also show you what my tail looks like, if that's okay with you, um, Jacob. Please, please do so, Louis. All right, hold on, I'll be right back. Let me go get my tail. All right, I'm back. This is what my tail looks like. It's this little mud open here. It's actually a part of his skin. It's made by Mer Taylor. And of course, I also have compression shorts, which are in the same pattern as my tail and same with the leggings. They're made out of the same material as the skin. Very, very cool, uh, Louis. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, your merman uh, things, what you do with that and everything else. Well, I became a merman because of a friend of mine who became a mermaid herself almost three years ago when she got her first tail. And this friend and I are close and known each other for years, but I'm not going to talk too much details about it because, you know, I have to respect her wishes and all. But what I can say about her is that she's also a mermaid. She's also a diver herself, also is a YouTuber and does, is also a streamer. And she likes to cosplay, but who knows? Maybe I could try to get her to come join your program one day. Because, you know, because I'll definitely be glad to help you with that. Oh, I would be happy to have her. Thank you, uh, Louis. Uh, Louis, my next question. Um, tell, us, tell us about what you're doing with your different programs as a, as a member of Dive Heart. Well... As a member of Dive Heart, I'm just a adaptive diver with them. I found out about Dive Heart in 2015 when I discovered autism and scuba diving, and it led me to an article from WGN in Chicago, which, of course, the person featured in the article, I've met him and his father on, on two of the three trips I've been to, to Cozumel, in Mexico with, their names are Nick and Glenn Johnson, with Nick being on the spectrum, 
And of course, as for Dive Heart, they, they started 21 years ago and was founded by a man named Jim Elliott, who, who also used to work for WGN and had, has a blind daughter and he used to be an adaptive ski instructor. He thought if this works with skiing, why not apply this to scuba diving? That's pretty much how Dive Heart was born. And then he also does things, yeah, he, yeah. Yeah, Jim has also established other branches of Dive Heart across the country, like down in South Florida, California, even some in other countries like the UK. And of course, in, in, and in Malaysia, I believe. Yeah, Malaysia. And they do trips to um, Cozumel in Mexico. They also do trips to Key Largo. And they also do trips to Costa Rica as well. Oh, wow. And of course, forgot to say, and of course, my second trip to Cozumel is how I met a mutual friend of yours, Josh Basil. That's how I met him. Uh, I went to, I'll tell you how I met Josh Basil. Uh, he did a, um, he did a presentation about you know, living his life as a paraplegic. And I was very interested and I got talking with him and he's a very interesting man. Yeah, and of course, it, and of course he recently became a father and because I am also friends with him on Facebook. And as for Josh, it was a cool pleasure to meet him during my second trip to Cozumel. It's very, very interesting to hear about that. Uh, tell us a little more about you, Lou. It's like, where did, where did you come from? Where did you go to school? Well, well, where I come from, it's Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I went, as for schools, um, let's just say, I'll tell you the last school I went to was a place called Wordsworth Academy, but it's been renamed Fairwad. But of course, that's where I graduated high school. I, I have yet to even attend college. I like to. And of course, it's just a long story about where I went to school at, though. It's just, you know, it's just a very long story. Oh, okay, well, it's, um, well, if you... If someone wanted to get involved in Dive Heart, how would they do so? They can visit diveheart.org for more information and training. I'll be right back. I'm going to show you one of these shirts that Dive Heart has. Actually, rash guards. This is what the dive heart, yeah. As you see here on the shirt, this is how you visit their website. It explains the training, what they do, and the trips, and how you can volunteer. And if you live, live in the Chicago area, which of course I know you don't, but others do, they do have experiences where they take people of all just, you know, all disabilities, including wheelchair users, such as yourself, into the pool. And this, yeah, that was just the short rash guard. Here's the long sleeve one. And of course, it says it on the sleeves, diveheart.org. And of course, the back of both of them says, search diveheart.org and imagine the possibilities. Yes, imagine the possibilities. Live like, live like Jim. If you want to start a program like this for our families that are watching this, please um, look into it. it. A lot of our families have started programs such as like Dive Heart. We have adapted rowing on the uh, Atlantic City shores. So many different programs we've spotlighted tonight. If you would like more information about anything we've talked about during this interview, 
as Lewis said, please visit diehard.org. Lewis, um, tell me uh, some of the other things you would like to uh, talk about today. Well, I also like to talk about, you know, how I became a diver, what I do on YouTube, and, and also me as a Twitch streamer, as well as I'll talk, talk about, you know, growing up being autistic and, you know, bullying and stuff. So let's start with that. Tell us how you became a diver. Well, I fell in love with diving when I was two years old, when I seen scuba diving on TV as, as a kid. But of course, in 2006, when I was 22, I um, struggled to um, with, with, with certain things in diving, mainly just the academics. It's just not easy, but the water skills were easy. I failed two times under NAWI, the, the National Association of Underwater Instructors, and failed once under PADI, the Professional Association of Dive Instructors, but I did pass with them. But of course, when I was up, up at Dutch Springs to do my open water certification dives, I did struggle with mainly my buoyancy only because of the fact I had a weight belt and it kept slipping off. And then there was a time I accidentally went down to 60 feet when I wasn't supposed to during my third dive. But in the end, I still managed to pass. And then I also had issues with clearing the water out of my mask because of the fact I was struggling a bit. Same thing happened 10 years later in Cozumel during my first trip with Dive Heart. And of course, speaking of Dive Heart, I forgot to mention, if you want, you could, I could definitely suggest Jim Elliott and um, Tina Marie Hernandez for you if you want to talk to them more about Dive Heart in the future. How would you like to do that? I mean, yes, uh, that sounds interesting, yes. Maybe I would like to talk to them, yes, please, uh, Lewis. Uh, moving on to the next topic, tell the viewers about their, your Twitch and your YouTube channels and how could they find you? Well, as for me being a YouTuber, it is called Lewis's Adventures, which is youtube.com slash Lewis Adventures, as well as my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash Lou Adventures. And of course, when I do stream on Twitch, I play. I like to play different games, such as um, Pokemon Go. I also do classic games like Need for Speed and so forth, Sonic. And as for being a YouTuber, I also make videos about documentaries, which of course they are my breath about the adventures that go on, including diving. That's that's just my bread and butter. I've also made videos about my trips to Cozumel, as well as I also do videos about Pokemon Go. I also do short vlogs, reviews. And I even recently did an interview with um, Trina Mason, also known as Trina the Mermaid, last Saturday over on her YouTube channel with, as part of her series called Testimony in a Tub. I'll be sure to send you the links to all my information later on, including how you can find me on Instagram. Yes, please and Twitter. do, Lewis. I, I, would, I would like to share that with our audience um, this evening. Um, you, you mentioned uh, or, no, you mentioned bullying. Uh, yeah, it's because people didn't understand me. They thought I was weird and because in 2009, people made fun of me over a stupid video I made on my personal YouTube. And they tried to, you know, make me, you know, do what they want just to get laughs out of it. You know, you ever heard of the term locale? Have I ever heard of the term low, low, low what? Locale? Locale. Yeah, locale or no. No, I've don't think I've ever well, heard of that. Well, it's it's where you bully someone to, you know, get laughs out of them and, you know, make them look like fools. And, of course, I'm not going to name names or examples of people who have done that and they've ended up in trouble, though. No, no, no. That's not the kind of person I am. And, and of course, they, 
and these bullies even tried to give get me to give me my phone number to them. I said no because I don't do that because I, I don't give up. I, I don't ever give out my home address or number because I want to protect those. Yes, it's very smart. I don't I don't give my number out either. And Louis, the, I couldn't remember the last. Uh, Thing you, you gave me four topics. What was the last one you wanted to talk about? Well, the last topic I'd say about about one when, when it comes to um yeah I think I can think of another topic we a continuation of an existing one that we talked yeah, about because there's more, more. Let's talk more about autism. All right, and I want yeah I want I'll talk about that and I also want to talk I also want to talk about how dive heart training works for for people on both the spectrum and in wheelchairs if that's okay well, let's with you. Do, well let's do the dive heart training first and then we'll talk more. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Um, when it comes to um, dive heart training, Jacob, you're in a wheelchair, right? Yes, correct, Lewis. Well, if you signed up for Dive Heart and took a trip, well, what they what they what what they're going to have you do is, I'll tell you how they get people in wheelchairs into the water. They usually have them in scuba gear. They have them sit on the edge of the boat and then they roll them into the water, where they're helped by more than one person. And then, and then that person also happens. Yeah, one of the buddies also, you know. That's the air out of their BCD, and of course they control your your air your your buoyancy for you. And of course, because you're also an adaptive diver, some adaptive divers will also wear a full face mask because of the fact some adaptive divers like myself and Nick we can handle normal masks on our face and um, regulators in our mouths, which of course and of course. This is something I learned because it takes a while for um, for someone in a wheelchair such as you to, um, you know, help them get their wetsuit on because it takes, it could, I'd say, maybe like 10 minutes or something. It's not easy, though, because you want to, because when people are helping the adaptive diver on with their wetsuit, you want to be sure not to injure them in the process. And, of course, that's how it's done. And that's for aut autistic divers. Well, they do help them out sometimes if you're not paying attention and you know and you're not sure. But otherwise, if you're able to swim without any help, then they help you. Very good, uh, friends. If you want to learn more about dive heart, uh, please visit diveheart.org. As I said, please, friends, please donate. We've raised a ton of funds tonight. Lewis told you his story. If you want to learn more, subscribe to his YouTube channel. Uh, please uh, feel free to reach out to me. I have Lewis's email if you would like it. Thank you for all of you who have supported tonight's telethon. We could not have done it without you. And of course, one more thing before we end this. Um, yeah, um, I didn't discover I was autistic, you know, and asked me until I was the age of 12 because my parents discovered this by complete accident because they knew that there was something wrong with me since I was younger because, you know, I did things that, you know, that a normal person wouldn't do, you know, like turning your head, fidgeting and stuff. Oh, so your parents, your parents discovered you were autistic when you were 12. Exactly. And I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome at 12. But I've, but I've been diagnosed with ADHD since I was younger, too, though. I've been, I'm also have, which sometimes I forget things. I sometimes don't think straight. Oh, okay. I know it happens. Happens to all of us. I mean, I understand where you're coming from, Louis. Uh, it's I thank you for um, allowing us to be on, uh, 
Thank you for allowing me, I should say, to interview you tonight. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Well, I had fun being interviewed by Jacob for his telethon. It was cool. We talked about a lot of things. We talked about what it's like for me to be a diver at the Adventure Aquarium, to being involved in Dive Heart, being a merman, and other things. And I'll never forget this experience. Again, if you want to learn more about Jacob Hackett, I'll be sure to post the, the link to his channel and the original interview in the description below. In the meantime, this is Lewis saying, Thanks for watching, everyone! You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, and TikTok. And remember, 